teams I've worked on have done a lot of AI stuff. I guess I would say I like the unsexy side of sexy technology. So when we were doing kind of image recognition for figuring out if yeah. you know, people are trying to put porn in ads, we were competing with people. Dr. Nancy Lee, a director of product and feature in Forbes. I've helped hundreds of people land their dream PM job offer in fan companies, a unicorn startup, and continue to get promoted as a product leader. In this channel, we cover tech trends and free product management training. Like and subscribe, check out new video every Tuesday. How can people become an AI product manager? Teams I've worked on have done a lot of AI stuff, you know, kind of uh, machine learning, computer vision related stuff, image recognition, so on. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, Working on some of those kinds of basics and things that are like, you know, I like, in general, I like the, I guess I would say I like the unsexy side of sexy technology. So specific example, you know, we were competing for, you know, PhDs in ML and, and AI related disciplines mm -hmm. um, when we were doing kind of image recognition for figuring out if yeah. you know, people are trying to put porn in ads. We were competing with people trying to, who wanted to build filters for Snapchat or Facebook or whatever, you know, com, you know, real time computer exactly. vision applications. And so I think, again, like if you're, you know, if you're thinking about some of that stuff, I'd say look at fundamentals of the baseline, the basics and learn those. That's always a good thing to, you yeah. know, to, you know, that's one way to kind of get up to speed on something in a way that maybe isn't as might be harder, less hard to get into than if you're trying to go work at the hottest new startup that's doing some of this stuff. Again, you should try that too. But the reality is a lot of these fundamentals, I think, will stand people in good stead if they learn them and they understand them uh, deeply. Exactly. All come from the foundations and fundamentals. And then you can move on to either larger tech, smaller tech, and totally up Absolutely. to your, your career choice. So Andrew Chen says something very interesting, and he was talking about Hey, for companies like Google, Meta, all the like big tech, like fan companies, and when they need employees, they bring employee into the new company. And then once the most talented employee join the company, they hope the dreams getting killed there because they're working on something not very passionate. And the interview is very difficult. Once you get in, they're working on something small. And once there's a layoff, you are the first one to go. It, you just your dream get killed so therefore he's totally anti join big tech company so what's your reaction to it do you agree disagree or is there any truth to it well i think look i think it's both something that he's saying that's in his interest to say right as someone who works at a, at a vc a prominent vc fund that want people yeah. to join these other companies and, and there is some truth to it because you know you're going to have a slower pace of innovation you may work on a project that gets killed you may work on something that's not core to the business you know there's there's definitely lots of lots of things and the trade-offs are you probably get paid better at least more you know at least in the short term now if you work at a, a startup that turns out to be a you know 10 10 000 x whatever it is you know you're going to make more money but the point is and a lot of people again to be clear on doing this for money but look i think there's always reality to team the company the org i think there's many more questions when you go to a big company it's like okay well how are these organizations going to change over time what's the leadership like and like there's a high degree i would say there's a high degree of between how good different organizations are at these big companies and how True. and good maybe is too objective a term how matched they are or going to be are to, to to your career aspirations and to you know the things you want to learn so for me i think a lot of it's about what do i feel like i can learn stuff here mm -hmm. um and then the reality is for anyone who's worked in startups sometimes you just kind of need to you need something a bit more stable and again with tech layoffs, maybe things aren't as stable, but you, you, you may need something where the dynamics of the trade-offs of, you know, high risk reward variance is lower and, you know, just stability is because you can't just kind of be going on and on and on for years and years and years. You know, I found when I was working in startups, it was, you know, it was taking a lot less money for many years. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and again, we had a good exit to my first startup and it was, it was good, but it's still, I probably would have made more money if I'd been a product manager at one of these other big companies, right? Uh, when you when you add it all up at the end of the day. So I think again, it's a tr it's another one of these things that's a trade off. I would just suggest people do their do the due diligence, talk to PMs, talk to other functions, talk to folks at these companies, mm -hmm. you know, do the research. Again, take the stuff you read online with a grain of salt if you other platforms like some of that stuff is actually really interesting. Some of it's you know, a bit vitriolic, but again, do your diligence and talk to more people than you would otherwise.